you for being here. It's awesome. We have 65 events happening in different parts of the world today. It's pretty impressive. Um, this is Naoko right now presenting, uh, presenting uh, at our live stream. Are you all registered for our live stream? We have a live stream happening on Crowdcast and it's going to be 24 hours of sessions about translating different languages and from different people. Um, this is not what we're focusing on today. Okay, let's do this. Is there a, a clicker I can use or should I? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all right. I can, I can just switch the slides from here. So this is a quick introduction. How many of you have translated WordPress before? Nobody has translated WordPress before? That's awesome. So you're all new contributors. This is, this is, pretty, this is pretty, pretty great. I really like seeing people that have not contributed before. It's very easy to get started. Uh, we are a huge team and you can be a part of it too. And it's, uh, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here talking to you. WordPress Translation Day, as I said, is today. We have a lot of things happening simultaneously. We have events in Asia, Europe, everywhere. You can, if you go on wptranslationday.org, you can see the map of everything that is happening right now. Um, we are doing this for the second time, so you're a part of the second one. This is the first event in Singapore. Thank you, John, for uh, organizing this. I hope this is not gonna be the last one. Um, and um, uh, our primary goal is to show you guys how to translate WordPress. You probably all use WordPress in some form or another, your work or like you're blogging or you're doing something. And if you speak a language other than English, which you apparently do, <laughs> you, can, you can help contribute to WordPress because WordPress is made by volunteers. As John said, there are 14 teams contributing and the Polyglots team has about 10,000 people already helping it worldwide. We are in a hundred, like trans WordPress translated in 160 languages and even more, Chinese and Japanese being one of them. Um, the other goal uh, of the day is to learn, uh, for developers to learn how to make their software translatable. There are a couple of sessions during the live stream dedicated to that, so you can check them out. And the, uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is like, there are gonna be live streaming sessions from all these events. So you can see some of the other people that are already doing this from, uh, from all corners of the world. And uh, yeah, our primary goal is uh, obviously to get to know each other, to meet and to have fun, and uh, to kind of make the web, the web a better place by contributing to one of the most popular open source projects. Uh, a few terms, you will probably see this a lot, L10N over there, that's an abbreviation like a shortened uh, word for localization, which literally means translating software. It means making software, like translating software in a particular language. I18N is the, other, is the other kind of similar abbreviation that you're going to see, and uh, it means internationalization. The reason they're shortened like that is because both words are a mouthful, and, <laughs> and also they take a lot of space on Twitter. You know, it's kind of, uh, you know, you, you spell internationalization on Twitter and there, there go your 140 characters. So uh, developers have found a way to shorten this. So localization is L10N and internationalization is uh, I18N. And the numbers stand for the number of letters that you have between the first and the last. The first and the last letter. <laughs> Don't count them. It's, just, it's the right one, you know. Somebody would have noticed it. If that wasn't the right one. Um, what is a locale? A locale, uh, from a geographical perspective, that's a place. From a software perspective, it's a collection of, uh, of information about a certain language as spoken in a certain place. So a locale is kind of an identification that shows which language is spoken in which place and uh, it includes information about uh, currency conversions and like data, uh, dates and how those are spelled, currency, um, currency symbols, uh, numbers, uh, there are different numbers in the different uh, scripts. So a locale has all that information. And when we talk about uh, about WordPress translations, we talk about, we don't talk about languages, we, we talk about locales because we have um, 
uh, for example, different locales for Spanish. We have nine different locales for Spanish because Spanish is different depending on where it is spoken, right? Portuguese as well. For example, Brazilian Portuguese and Portuguese as spoken in Portugal, uh, they have they have like big differences. They have differences in the way the sentences are constructed. They have differences in vocabulary. So some words are entirely different. You guys probably know uh, how American English is different from British English sometimes. Like the, the, the British people don't really enjoy um, reading and using American English all the time because they find it simplified. Like a, uh, so we have four different, no, sorry, six different English locales. We have English, uh, the original US American English, and we have British English, Canadian English, we have English uh, spoken in New Zealand, Austria, Australia and Canada. So all of these people, uh, the point of that is to make WordPress sound a little bit more local, you know? So when somebody from Canada or somebody from the UK opens WordPress, it doesn't greet them with howdy, which is uh, text. Texas kind of way to, to greet people. It greets them with how do you do, which is a very British way to greet people, right? So this is this is the this is the, what the local information holds. And WordPress has 164 as of today different locales. Those may be uh, different languages, but they can also be different languages as spoken in particular places. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't, I thought that I updated that, but yeah, it's 164, we added se se several more. Um, this is how WordPress grew, so in 2003, uh, it was created in 2003, 2011, uh, it was only 13% of the web, and today, it actually, as of yesterday, powers 27% of the web, this is uh, old data as well, and a lot, a big Part of that is due to the fact that very early on people started translating it. So today, uh, you know, until 2014, uh, you could all, all, you could only download different languages from uh, different languages from the local Rosetta sites. But after that, um, in uh, WordPress 4.0. In non-English locales for the non-English translations for the first time kind of surpassed the English ones, which means that WordPress is used in languages other than English more than it is used in English. All of the combined languages, they form uh, a bigger usage than, uh, than English. Yeah, so today we have 140 uh, and uh, 64 locales and 73 of those are translated at 100%. So every WordPress stream is translated into those languages. Um, the rest of them uh, are either 90% 90, 90 plus translated or 50% plus translated, and we have several new ones that are still, you know, at 0 to 50%. Um, this is all data. I'm gonna just quickly run through uh, this. 23 locales of more than 50, and 62 locales have less than 50% translated. Uh, which means that they have a lot of work to do uh, yet. And uh, our next target as a team is to get WordPress at 100% and the top plugins and themes, which are also available for translation online, we want to get them to 100% as well. So how does it work? This is the main address. This is where, where you'll be going today. It's translate.wordpress.org. When you go there, you have like a big drop, like a big uh, list of languages, and you can search for your language, and you can select it, and you can start translate. You only need a WordPress.org username to do that. This is how the, the page looks. If you open it, you will see this. You enter, um, start typing the name of the language that you want to translate in. You select it like this. You see the project that are available for translation. You click on translate project and you start, you will see the original string on the uh, above, like the field to enter the string. You enter the translation and you hit uh, enter and you're done. This is your al already suggesting, suggesting strings. It's very, very easy. It takes uh, two clicks you only need to have a WordPress.org username. 
Um, everybody can suggest strings, but they don't automatically get imported to the project. For that, we rely on people that we call, call general translation editors. These are people who have been um, involved with the, that locale for the start, from the start, or like a very spent a lot of time dedicating uh, dedicating efforts to it, and they uh, can approve the suggested strings. And uh, their primary primary job is to make sure that there are no typos, no grammatical mistakes, you know, punctuation is correct, and uh, Generally, uh, the, lo the translation follows the style guide for that particular language because you know how you know some people translate um, translate some words um, or even transliterate some words and translate some words differently. Uh, the idea is that if there is a term, it has to be translated in the same way across all projects. For example, email. You know whether or not you're, you you leave it in English or you will transliterate it or you will spell it with a dash or something like this. So the translation editors make sure that their translations are uh, very like their they are quality translations and that there are no mistakes so that we don't push you know bad language to users. And then the step three is release the translations and uh, those happen automatically these days for the most part. Most locales, if they are at 100% when a new version of, um, of WordPress is released, they get automatically released, translations get automatically released uh, together with WordPress. For example, if we get Japanese to 100% by the time WordPress 4.7 gets pushed, which will be in December, then Japanese, the Japanese translations will automatically go to all the people that are using WordPress in Japanese on the day that WordPress 4.7 gets released. And that is valid for each of the other languages as well. For the, um, this is due to uh, a functionality that got imported uh, recently that's called language packs. So those ensure that automatically all the translations will be updated on the day of the release. Um, and then when that happens, on install, uh, people can uh, people can go and select the language. Like when they install WordPress, they they have like a list of all the languages that are 95 plus uh, translated and have been released for WordPress. And then also from the user admin, you can go and change your language. And the languages available are again the ones that are released for the last two versions of WordPress. Which there is still a way for uh, people to download WordPress in another language. Each locale is associated with uh, its own local WordPress.org site. For Japanese, we have ja.wordpress.org. For Chinese, we have cn.wordpress.org, and you can go there and you can download WordPress in that language uh, at the latest release from this big, beautiful button over here. Um, okay, so a little bit about the Polyglots team. This is a volunteer team. It's the biggest contributor team uh, WordPress has. Uh, we have more than 10,000 people contributing and more than uh, 1,000 translation editors. So these are all people that are dedicated do like that has spent consistently spent a lot of time uh, translating uh, WordPress and validating and helping the translator contributors validate their strings. Um, most of the polyglots are native speakers, which ensures that WordPress will speak will not speak robotish uh, ro robotic language. You know, it's uh, easy to run things to Google Translate, but uh, more often than uh, than not those translations are unusable by real humans, right? So we have real people translating in a way that actually makes sense for users. And that's what we ask our general translation editors to try to do. Um, they, the translation is usually started by developers who need a translation for a client project or something like this. But over the time, with the, uh, with the way um, the team is evolving, 
more and more non-developers jo join the team. You don't really need technical skills to translate. The only thing that you need is knowledge of WordPress because you have to be able to make sense of, uh, of the, the thing that you're translating. You know, you have to know where it is in the admin, what it does, so that you can translate it. Um, so if your language is already in, you can uh, you can go to make slash slash teams and find your local team. Um, it's a uh, this is the polyglots, the so-called polyglots P2. This is the blog where we communicate, where we talk to each other, where requests are published when needed, and, uh, and where general discussions happen for the global team. What is this now? We communicate in Slack. Um, and you can register for the general WordPress Slack when you go uh, on chat.wordpress.org. If you already have a WordPress.org username, you will automatically be assigned a uh, chat.wordpress.org uh, email address and you can register for the Polyglot Slack. John will help you out with that after the session is over and the people that are already on Slack will, can also help you out with that. Uh, this is how Slack looks. This is the Polyglot channel and it's a chat, Slack is a chat program. We just when you have a problem, when you want to ask a question, when you want to find somebody, you go and like you ask a question or you talk to someone. If you don't know how to translate something or you need a little bit of context, this is also the place where you ask. This is where we have our weekly meetings. Every Wednesday we have two meetings, one for the Asia Pacific region and one for uh, Europe, Africa and the Americas. Um, we just gather together and discuss common topics, problems that are occurring or things like that. Um, we also have update notifications of incoming streams. So this is, this is what, what they look like. This means that whenever new streams get pushed to one project, you know, Slack gets a notification about it and you can see it and you can go translate. Uh, there are local Slack channels. This is the Bulgarian one. There's a Japanese one. And I'm not sure if there's a Chinese one. Robert, help me out here. Is there a Chinese one? A Chinese Slack channel? I don't think so. Well, that's all right. Uh, you can you can still use the general one, and you can use the um, um, you can also create one if you want to, or one of the Chinese general translation editors can. This is how a local Slack looks. The idea of a local Slack is for you to be able to discuss translations in your language, because with people that are working on the same uh, on the same language. And then we have blogs. Um, the make WordPress blog slash polyglot blog that I already talked about. This is where we discuss everything that is related to the global team. The Rosetta sites are quite important. Uh, they're a primary tool for the active contributors to communicate with uh, anyone speaking that particular language. It's the local equivalent of WordPress, WordPress dork. And this is where, you know, uh, all the messages about meetups, and about new upcoming releases of WordPress uh, need to be uh, published. And a lot of communities are using their sites very, very actively. So the new challenge is to translate all the plugins and themes. Uh, there are 30,000 plugins and 7,000 7, themes in the repo, so we have a lot to do. Uh, translating is a great way to procrastinate. It's my favorite way, like when I'm when I when I don't feel like doing my like doing my ordinary job, and I instead of going to watch like YouTube videos and uh, pictures of kitties online, I just go and <laughs> I just go and translate. That way, that way I feel I'm doing something useful, even when I'm not I'm not really doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, but yeah, translate, translating is a great way to kind of get away from uh, from a particular task. And uh, it's a really nice way to give back to the community. As I said, we have a lot of translating to do. So by all means, if you have a plugin or a theme that you like for WordPress, you can start there and you can translate those. So these are the steps. You, have, you need an account at WordPress.org to translate. You can create one when you go to login.wordpress.org. 
Um, after you create one, you go to translate WordPress.org and uh, you just start translating. Pick a project, uh, WordPress, if WordPress is not translated, uh, then by all means suggest translations for WordPress. But if it's fully translated in your language, just choose a theme or a plugin and that's what you can contribute to. Glowpress is the translation tool that we use, the translation management system that we use for WordPress. It's an open source project as well. It lives on Translate WordPress.org. So Translate WordPress.org is powered by Glowpress. That's what the software is called. Yeah, and this is the translations happen at Translate WordPress.org slash locale slash your language code. I don't know why these um, slides are repeating. Some useful tips when you're translating. There's a translator's handbook. Um, if you need any, um, if you have any questions, most of the answers to those, those questions about translating are at makewordpress.org slash handbook. Uh, your local team, you can find your local team and the general translation letters for the, um, for the languages that you want to translate in. At this address, make WordPress.org slash polyglot slash teams. Um, and uh, if there is no local community, you can create one, you can resurrect your local community. There, if, when you go to make WordPress.org slash polyglot slash teams, you will see that some of the locales will be in red. That means that they haven't been released for at least two versions of WordPress. That means that they are kind of, sort of, abandoned. Not being released for the last two versions of WordPress means that nobody has worked on those locales for more than for more than ten months, which means that maybe people don't have enough time. That is okay because everyone's volunteering their time. But uh, that also means that if your language is one of those red languages and you want to help it move along, you can pick it up, you can post a request to become a general translation editor, and uh, you can help your language get to 100%. So yeah, you can request to join a team, you can con attempt to contact the current general translation editors, most of them are on Slack, if not, most of them have information on their uh, WordPress.org profiles. Um, and uh, yeah, you can become a general translation editor. So, one thing that we need to know uh, when we translate WordPress is that everyone's a volunteer. So, we, we never make demands. We will never, if you join the team, we will never come to you and say, well, you know, why aren't you translating? We know that you're all doing this, uh, you know, out of the goodness of your heart and because you care, uh, but there are never going to be any demands. Even if, like, a language gets stuck for a couple of months or a year, that's all right. The good thing about, uh, about contributing to WordPress is that WordPress is big enough these days uh, that sometimes, at some point, somebody will step up, somebody will bring it back, uh, back on track. Um, your participation in the team needs to be uh, on your own time. It doesn't have to interfere with your ordinary schedules. Most of us do it because we really like each other. <laughs> And uh, a lot of us do it because we need um, WordPress translated in those languages for our work. So you can find your own reason over time uh, to keep doing it or to, uh, or to, keep, to keep contributing to the team. Uh, you can do it on your own time. Nobody will never hold, like, hold you accountable or <laughs> ask you to dedicate more than you can. Uh, if there is no local team for a language that you're interested in, in bringing WordPress to, you can request one. There's just post a request on make WordPress.org slash polyglots and uh, the team will work with you to create that locale and to make it available for translations for everyone out there. This is how a, this is how a locale request looks. You need to provide certain information, uh, do a little research, there's a language code included, you have to do a little research on plural forms, uh, but basically you just say, hey WordPress is not yet available in this language, can we create a locale so people start, can start translating it? This is just an example of one locale request. 
in your uh, local team, there are general translation editors, project translation editors, and translation contributors. General translation editors have the power to approve streams for all projects for that locale. Project translation editors all are only responsible for, for example, a particular plugin or theme. That means that they can suggest translations for all the other projects, but they can all approve translations only for a certain project plugin theme or a part of WordPress. And then the translation contributors are all the people that are suggesting streams. Uh, all the people that are going and like adding translations to uh, WordPress projects that don't have them yet. Every team uh, or most of the teams have uh, local style guides and glossaries. Those are kind of uh, documents that help you know what word is translated how. So general, like a list of general 100 or 200 terms uh, that you need to know how to translate and how are translated uh, throughout the project. The style guide is just instructions on how to approach certain types of translations. All these are a little, I mean, all these are a little vague. You will get to them once you start using it, uh, using the software and start translating, you will, you will understand what I'm talking about. So the general expectations when translating, uh, you can't include random links in translations. A lot of people in the past have tried to like, uh, in the first translations have tried to promote their own services and their languages and things like that. We don't do that. That's not why we translate WordPress. So you can't include random links. Not only you shouldn't, you actually can't because uh, the software is not going to accept a link that is not included in the original string. Uh, don't translate literally. That means that sometimes you might need to change the order of the words and you might need to change uh, you know, an entire sentence or not even use a particular word. Uh, just make it sound as if, you know, just make it sound human. <laughs> don't, don't translate it, don't translate every word as it is. Uh, that's what Google Translate does. We're not Google Translate, we're people. Um, the same level of formality, uh, I'm not really familiar if uh, Japanese or Chinese have formal and informal, I, I'm guessing they do. Uh, but for example, um, in English and in a lot of languages, um, sometimes you use a certain language when you want to speak more politely and as if you know you don't know the person and you use different type of language when you're speaking to like people you know and you're familiar with uh, that includes some grammatical forms and things like that so WordPress uh, look up what the general tone of WordPress in your language is and try when you translate try and keep the same level of formality uh, for your translations as well Slang or um, audience specific terms, uh, for example, the best example of this is actually in the original translation, so how do you slang? But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not the general hello, it's not the general hi, it's uh, a very specific area specific term. Um, we forgive uh, this sometimes and that's why we localize, because we can make uh, WordPress sound uh, like we want to in our language. But generally, like slang is not uh, accepted. And um, you can, the, the general rule of thumb when you want to um, see or want to get advice on how to translate a particular thing is to look up uh, how a particular term has already been translated in WordPress. So um, generally, uh, reference back to the project itself. Some common mistakes. Um, transliteration instead of translation, we uh, talked about this, so usually you just uh, use the English word and uh, spell it out in your local, in your local alphabet, which is, you know, it's alright for some terms, but don't, don't forget that we're translating WordPress for the people that don't speak English. Yes, a lot, of, a lot of us speak both English and like our local languages, but we're translating WordPress for our kids and for our moms and for our grandparents and for people that want to use it that don't really know what that word means in English. So if you transliterate it, it's going to sound the same to them uh, as it, it will sound in, um, in English and they are not going to know what it means. So try and find an equivalent of the word in your local language. Um, 
be careful of their sometimes in translations you will see these con configurations those are so-called placeholders which means that they're uh, replaced by links or things like that in the original translation so when you see those you shouldn't translate them you should keep them the same way they are in the original um, don't use google translate <laughs> talked about that already and don't translate the things that you don't understand. If you don't understand the string, you, it's better to leave it. Somebody else will translate it or the translation editor will take care of it. What you can also do is look it up and try and understand what it means. It takes more time, but it's generally better than just literally translating something that you don't know, uh, you don't know the meaning of. Um, there are translator comments. Sometimes you will see that uh, in the uh, when you start translating, you will see that on the sidebar. Sometimes developers leave comments for translators explaining what that string actually means and where it's used. Um, keep an eye out for that. And uh, translation comments and contexts are important because they give you uh, more a deeper insight into why why we're translating and what, what we're translating right now, so we can do a better translation. Yes, and quality and consistency matter, so keep up with your local style guide and glossary if there is one, and if there is not one and you're not sure about the terms, just look them up before you translate them. Yeah. And if there isn't one, uh, if there isn't a local style, style guide or, um, or a glossary, you can always start one. So no, that's why it's an open source project, like everybody, you don't need any type of authority to start doing something that is missing. You can just go for it and just share it with the others so that they can expand and can work on it. That's it. Let's translate and uh, there is a handbook page that says getting, getting started to contribute today. Uh, we'll leave uh, the link to it or like write the link to it on the on the blackboard so you can like if you don't remember anything of this presentation just google the polyglots and contribute the day so yeah <laughs> we will write it down on the, on the whiteboard there is a list of steps there uh, all the links are there so you don't have to really remember any of this uh, maybe the only link that you need to remember is this one it's easy translate.wordpress.org right Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the live stream, but I'm gonna be around today, so if you have any questions, I'm happy to help. Uh, John is also going to uh, answer qu some questions you have. Uh, Robert is a translation editor for uh, several plugins for Chinese, so he knows the platform as well, so you can ask him. <laughs> Delegate it. Um, and uh, yeah. Just, um, you can tune in to the live stream at some point if you want to watch some sessions as well. The live stream, we're going to write the live stream on the, um, on the whiteboard as well. Uh, at 4 a.m. UTC, what time is it? The, the, is that here? Twelve. At 12, yeah. There's going to be community, a community session for the Asia Pacific region. Cool. So it would be awesome if you stream these guys in. Yeah. Awesome. So you, you yeah. guys say hi to the rest of the world. <laughs> so actually, you know, we, we uh, think don't have so much stream now. Yeah. So am I getting the link correct? Did I check?